Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. The X-Men have many heroes to adore, but the mutant with blue skin, devilish looks, and a heart of gold has to be one of the breakout characters. Today, we explore the tangled but adventurous life and backstory of none other than Nightcrawler, along with his numerous adventures with the X-Men, and also explore his live action as well as animated appearances. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The tragic origins and complex past of Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler, who was born Kurt Wagner, was the child of the mutant terrorist Mystique and her husband, Baron Christian Wagner, who, during the birth of Nightcrawler, was believed to be his father. This was far from the truth, though, as Nightcrawler's real father was Azazel, a Neofem warlord who had an affair with Mystique as part of his plan to impregnate women from Earth to manage an escape from the Brimstone dimension. Due to Nightcrawler's demonic appearance, Mystique faced a lot of backlash from the townsfolk, resulting in her throwing an infant Nightcrawler into the river. Mystique then took on a different appearance and claimed that she'd killed the mother and son. Azazel, though, didn't allow Nightcrawler to die, and rather handed him over to Margali Sardos, one of Azazel's lovers who raised Nightcrawler. Margali narrated a false story of finding Nightcrawler one day on her way past his house, where she found his father, Eric, had died of a heart attack, with Nightcrawler's mother lying dead next to him. Margali raised Nightcrawler along with her two children, Stefan and Germaine, while working as a fortune teller to hide her status as a sorcerer at the Bavarian Circus. Nightcrawler's great agility and mutant power Powers allowed him to do acrobatic shows at the circus while the audience believed him to be a man in a costume. Later, a millionaire Texas circus owner, Amos Jardine, bought the Bavarian Circus but wanted to put Nightcrawler in a freak show, leading him to quit altogether and move to Winseldorf, Germany. At Winseldorf, Nightcrawler was reunited with Stefan, who had been killing children after going insane, resulting in Nightcrawler fighting him and accidentally killing Stefan by breaking his neck. The villagers at Winseldorf assumed Nightcrawler to be responsible for the child killings due to his demonic appearance. When they were were about to kill Nightcrawler, Professor X arrived just in time to psionically paralyze the villagers and offer Nightcrawler a position in the X-Men, which he accepted. Nightcrawler and the Professor then visited Margali at the Bavarian Circus to explain about Stefan's death, but she wasn't there at the time and ended up believing Nightcrawler to be Stefan's killer. Starting fresh with the X-Men. Following his recruitment, Nightcrawler helped Professor X and Cyclops in rescuing the original team of X-Men from Krakoa. With original members leaving for some time, Nightcrawler became part of the new X-Men, alongside other recruits Wolverine, Storm, Thunderbird, and Banshee. Nightcrawler was also given an image inducer to hide his demonic appearance from the public, but he gave up using it soon after Wolverine accused him of being ashamed of his appearance. During his time using the image inducer, Nightcrawler met and dated air stewardess Amanda Sefton. Nightcrawler also briefly fought Spider-Man and the Punisher while investigating the murder of his old friend Eric Hoffman, but it was revealed that Jigsaw was the real killer, leading to the trio defeating him. During a meeting with Amanda at the airport, Nightcrawler recognized Hitman Arcade's place and found out that Oranos hired him to kill Spider-Man, but later refused after finding a new Hitman. Nightcrawler then decided to visit Oranos' circus impersonating Spider-Man to draw out the new Hitman, whom Nightcrawler fought alongside Spider-Man. During Nightcrawler's 21st birthday, Jermaine cursed his soul to a dimension representing Dante's hell where he faced Margali Sardos, blaming Nightcrawler for Stefan's death. The X-Men and Doctor Strange arrived in the dimension to help him, and after convincing Margali about Stefan's insanity, Nightcrawler was finally forgiven and released. Jermaine also revealed to Nightcrawler that she'd been with Nightcrawler, disguised as his girlfriend, Amanda. Nightcrawler then visited Ottawa, Canada with Wolverine to fix things with Alpha Flight and Department H, and also learned about Wolverine's real name being Logan. He later also fought Wendigo alongside Alpha Flight and Wolverine forming new friendships. Nightcrawler and the X-Men went to Washington to prevent the assassination of Senator Robert Kelly by the Brotherhood of the Mutants, led by Mystique. Coming across Mystique for the first time, Nightcrawler was astonished by their similar physical appearance and that she knew his real name. When Nightcrawler questioned Mystique, she told him to ask his foster mother, Margali, about it, which left Nightcrawler confused. Nightcrawler also formed a close friendship with Wolverine and Colossus to the point of agreeing to a dare by Wolverine to walk undisguised down the Salem Center Main Street. When Amanda was kidnapped by Mystique, Lock. Nightcrawler and the X-Men traveled to Latveria and defeated a Doombot along with rescuing Arcade. Nightcrawler had also fought the Dire Wraiths alongside Forge and Amanda. After rescuing Jean and Cyclops' daughter from an alternate dystopian future, Rachel Summers from Selene. After Storm had seemingly lost her powers, Nightcrawler took over as the leader of the X-Men. Nightcrawler once recalled a past adventure involving the well at the center of time to Kitty Pride, who tried to create a simulation of it in Xavier's school's danger room, but unknowingly ended up opening a doorway to the well itself. Lockheed 
made, Kitty's pet dragon flew towards the well to check it but got dragged inside a vortex by an alien green tentacle. When Nightcrawler followed Lockheed, he found himself in a bizarre alien world with the vortex taking the duo to different foreign worlds until Nightcrawler and Lockheed finally navigated the well and found their way back home. Nightcrawler then willingly stepped away from his role as the leader of X-Men following the return of Cyclops and Storm, letting them decide who would lead the team. When the X-Men fought the Beyonder, Nightcrawler was left behind and started to question his religious beliefs. While saving the Queen of Ruritania, Judith Rassendil, Nightcrawler also went against Arcade in the murder world before the rest of the X-Men returned from their fight against the Beyonder. In a fight against Nimrod, Nightcrawler tried to use an old move of teleporting parts of his body but having experienced it once already, Nimrod disrupted Nightcrawler's teleportation. This caused Nightcrawler to be teleported to the New York Harbors, though many believe that he didn't survive the attack. Colossus, Magic, and Kitty Pride rescued Nightcrawler, but he found out that he'd seemingly lost his power of teleportation rediscovering his powers. Nightcrawler's teleportation powers slowly returned, but it became exhausting for him to teleport, causing him to slip into a coma after he fought the Marauders and getting severely beaten up by Riptide. Nightcrawler was kept at the Muir Island Mutant Center for recovery, and upon waking up found out about the apparent deaths of the X-Men from Kitty Pride. In the following weeks, Nightcrawler also managed to figure out the limits of his powers, which was that he could only teleport once a day or else he'd be causing severe damage to his body leading a new team. Both Nightcrawler and Kitty Pride had the same dream for some time, and realized that Rachel Summers was probably trying to contact them telepathically. Nightcrawler soon went up against Saturnine's hired group of bounty hunters, the TechNet, who wanted to get rid of Rachel, Kitty, and Megan Pucano. Nightcrawler was able to track Rachel in London, where the TechNet were fighting the War Wolves for Rachel. Nightcrawler got additional help from Captain Britain, Megan, Rachel, and Kitty to defeat both the TechNet and War Wolves. Upon Rachel's insistence, Nightcrawler and Kitty Pride founded a new team of heroes known as Excalibur to be able to carry forward Professor X's dream. Nightcrawler was also starting to get attracted towards Megan, but didn't act on his feelings due to her being in a relationship with Captain Britain. When Kitty Pride posed as Rachel to find the rest of the War Wolves but got captured in the process, Nightcrawler tried to rescue her. Eventually, Nightcrawler was able to find the War Wolves' location and rescued Kitty alongside the Excalibur, placing the rest of the War Wolves in a zoo. The team also addressed Captain Britain's drinking problems following a fight with the Juggernaut and a few escaped prisoners and also moved into the their new headquarters at the Braddock Lighthouse, owned by Captain Britain. Excalibur found themselves at the murder world after following a trail of money and battled the group called the Crazy Gang to rescue Courtney Russ, Captain Britain's ex-girlfriend. During their battle, Excalibur members ended up getting their souls switched into the bodies of the Crazy Gang. Nightcrawler inhabited the body of the Jester during this time, but Courtney was able to help them return to their original bodies in the end. Nightcrawler and Captain Britain later visited the Flying Fish, where they discussed Captain Britain meeting his ex Courtney while being with Megan. Excalibur then traveled to the Empire State Building to fight demons after Rachel sensed her infant brother Nathan being in trouble. Under the influence of the demon Nasta, Megan was turned into the Goblin Princess while Nightcrawler tried to stop the marriage of the demon Crotus with Rachel, who was turned into a mannequin. Kitty Pride, after acquiring Ileana Rasputin's soul sword, was able to change the Goblin Princess back to Megan. Following this, Nightcrawler teleported into the Lockheed Aircraft Corporation to get the X-Men Stratojet, the SR-71 Blackbird. The Excalibur then rescued the Weird Happenings organization from their alternate reality versions the Lightning Force, along with negotiating the release of Dr. Moira McTaggart. Nightcrawler also learned about Mystique being his mother and took the TechNet under his wing, changing their name to the N-Men. He also entered into a brief romantic relationship with his teammate, Cerise, until she left for a Shi'ar trial. After becoming the new leader of Excalibur, Nightcrawler moved their headquarters to the Muir Island Research Center, where he reunited with his ex-girlfriend, Amanda Sefton, and Colossus, his former teammate from the X-Men, joined Excalibur. Returning to the X-Men, Excalibur disbanded following Captain Britain's leave from the group, which caused Nightcrawler to rejoin the X-Men alongside Kitty Pride and Colossus. Nightcrawler also came face to face with Astra, who was responsible for creating a clone of Magneto named Joseph. Astra also revealed vaguely about her past connection with Mystique, along with her involvement in Nightcrawler's birth, but due to her escape, Nightcrawler was left with more questions than answers following the path to priesthood. Nightcrawler briefly quit the X-Men to become a priest, following which he spent most of his time at the church. He was soon attacked by a group of mutants who were seeking revenge against the X-Men for their involvement with the High Evolutionary, who had briefly prevented all mutants from using their powers. This caused numerous mutants to die as they were high up in the air or deep underwater during the event. Nightcrawler was able to defend himself against the mutants and was eventually saved by a new X-Men recruit, Dr. Cecilia Reyes. 
Nightcrawler later mourned the loss of his friend, Colossus, who died while curing the legacy virus. This caused a loss of faith in Nightcrawler due to the death of a good man, along with the destruction of the mutant nation of Genosha, leading to the death of thousands of mutants. Nightcrawler eventually gave up on being a priest and rejoined the X-Men. Facing the Supernatural Nightcrawler found out about Azazel being his father, and also about the other children he'd spawned in his mission to take over Earth. He also led the X-Men for a brief period with Wolverine, Marvel Girl, Psylocke, Bishop, and Cannonball in his team. Nightcrawler then became a part of the X-Men under Storm's leadership, during which he helped to release a part of Africa from the oppression of her uncle. Nightcrawler also started teaching drama to the students at Xavier's Institute when he was not on missions. Storm assigned Nightcrawler on a mission to investigate the murder of 13 children at the Metro General Hospital, where the children were killed in a locked room. Nightcrawler met the only survivor, Seth, but he refused to talk because of Nightcrawler's appearance, causing him to look for other clues. Nightcrawler found marks of burnt hooves on the hospital's roof, which continued to the roof of other buildings, ending at a high-rise where a party was being thrown by Dr. Charles, one of the hospital's doctors. Another doctor claimed to Nightcrawler that Dr. Charles was responsible for the killings, but before he could say anything further, he burst into flames, causing Nightcrawler to teleport him to a lake. This didn't help as the doctor kept burning along with the fire spreading to Nightcrawler, for which he contacted Amanda in limbo, and she suggested the possibility of Seth unknowingly being a magician. Using his image induced Nightcrawler returned to talk to Seth and found out that he was feeling hot and sick, which was cured by tying knots in a string. Their conversation was cut short by the arrival of Dr. Charles, who introduced Seth's legal guardian, despite him denying it. When Nightcrawler turned back after leaving, he found the woman posing as Seth's legal guardian to be a demon. Seth and Nightcrawler's meeting got interrupted again by nurse Christine Palmer, who claimed that Seth's legal guardian was attacking Dr. Childs. When Nightcrawler teleported to Dr. Childs, he found Seth's guardian inside a circle with Childs screaming to him that he couldn't cross it, but Nightcrawler was able to teleport Seth's guardian from the circle to a church. Seth's guardian fainted at the church with a gas coming out of her, and later, upon taking her to limbo, found that she was possessed by 13 demons. Seth's guardian then revealed that Dr. Childs got her out of a shelter, but due to being attacked by the demons inside her, Dr. Charles had put her in the circle. Nightcrawler figured out that Seth must be possessed by the 14th demon, but before he could reach him, Seth was already taken by Dr. Charles into a room where the 13 demons were being kept inside a circle. Dr. Charles cut the rope made by Seth, which caused the 14th demon to be released, a feat made easier by Kitty Pride using her intangible powers on Seth. Once the demon was released, all 14 of them were sent to hell by Amanda. Nightcrawler and Nurse Christine soon started dating, and the couple, along with Storm and Wolverine, got into an accident with a train going by too fast. Nightcrawler was able to teleport them to safety, and upon further inspection of the subway, came across a man who attacked him using a mining tool, but somehow passed through Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was then asked by the mayor to check the disturbances at the subway. He came across a group of ghosts and got to know the history by touching one of them. After fighting the ghosts and being directed to a tool left in the subway, Nightcrawler took it to Amanda, who pointed out how old the tool was. After realizing the proper story, Nightcrawler visited the mayor to explain that he needed to pay tribute to those who died in the mining accident in his speech, which resulted in the ghosts finally being able to move on to the afterlife. Nightcrawler then visited a circus with Christine and Wolverine, but upon arrival, found it to be immersed in flames. Nightcrawler helped the people in danger when he came across Amos Jardine, a circus owner who wanted to put him in a freak show and a drugged as well as trapped Nightcrawler in a cage in the past. Amos was revealed to be under the control of the same demon, who drove Nightcrawler's brother Stefan mad and then made him murder children. The demon got captured by Margali Sardos, while Nightcrawler and Wolverine fought three other demons and a group of zombies, who were all destroyed by Amanda. Supporting the Professor Professor X was one of the mutants who was stripped of his powers due to the Scarlet Witch, and revealed to the X-Men that Vulcan had caused massive destruction. Professor X then recruited some of the X-Men, including Nightcrawler, to follow Vulcan in space. Following their return, Nightcrawler also assisted Professor X in his quest to find Magneto fighting the Marauders. During the X-Men's attack on the Marauders, Nightcrawler defeated Exodus by teleporting him outside and then banging his face on the ice floor. He also took out Omega Sentinel and Mastermind when the duo cornered Wolverine in a fight. Nightcrawler was then gravely injured after getting shot by Scalp Hunter. Later, when a Predator infiltrated the Xavier's mansion, Nightcrawler teleported all the injured mutants out of the medical lab. Pixie then teleported Nightcrawler along with other mutants to Muir Island, where he participated in the final battle.
adventures with Wolverine and Colossus. Following the supposed death of Professor X, the X-Men briefly disbanded, and Nightcrawler, along with Wolverine and Colossus, went to Europe. The three indulged in a war of pranks, where Wolverine used Nightcrawler's image inducer to make him look like Angelina Jolie. Nightcrawler, while appearing as Angelina, was photographed with her supposed new boyfriend, Colossus. The trio then visited Russia to visit the cemetery where Colossus's parents were buried, following which they visited a bar where they got into a fight, leading to them being outed as mutants. Later, while returning to Europe by train, the trio were attacked by Red Room robots. While Wolverine fought, Nightcrawler teleported Colossus outside where they both got shot. Wolverine was able to jump to catch Nightcrawler, going beneath him to take most of the hit from the fall. Upon waking up, the trio found themselves captured with Wolverine being connected to a machine that would shock him when the captor felt, along with a neck holder being put on Nightcrawler to shock him when he tried to teleport. The captor threatened to kill Colossus unless he revealed how they still retained their powers following the event of Scarlet Witch draining the powers of mutants. Colossus remained silent, but before he could be killed, Nightcrawler teleported to Wolverine, causing the massive electric shock to overload Wolverine's restraints and free them both. Wolverine killed the guards and the trio made their escape, only to find the mutant Omega Red. Nightcrawler teleported Omega Red to the sky and dropped him from there, leading to his defeat. The trio then returned to the US, rejoining the X-Men in San Francisco. Trip to Winseldorf Nightcrawler built a new chapel at the new home and X-Men base of operations, Grey Malkin Industries. He soon left the X-Men again after he felt he wasn't needed in the team due to Pixie's better teleportation abilities and also to visit Winseldorf. Nightcrawler was invited there to visit a new museum dedicated to him, but upon arrival, found that they needed help to take care of a monster named Veilfress. Upon fighting him, Nightcrawler discovered that Veilfress was a 16-year-old boy named Henrik Weber under the curse of a Romany woman. Nightcrawler sympathized with his struggle, remembering his own mistreatment by the townsfolk years ago, and tried to defend him even though he got injured. Veilfress ended up killing all 12 of his attackers and then himself, being unable to endure his life as a monster, and Mephisto collected his soul along with those of the attackers. Nightcrawler rejoined the X-Men following this event, dying for hope. When Cable brought Hope, the first mutant born after Scarlet Witch stripped mutants of their powers, to the present, Cyclops dispatched a team which included Nightcrawler to get them to safety. Nightcrawler defeated the enemy forces that went against them alongside his team and then found out about the secret of the X-Force when X-23 brutally killed a soldier. Nightcrawler threatened to quit but after being persuaded by Colossus, agreed to stay. Later, in Nevada, Rogue fought Bastion, a human-sentinel hybrid who was trying to kill Hope. After he injured Rogue, he went after Nightcrawler who was trying to teleport Port Hope as far away as possible from Bastion. When Bastion finally caught up and went near Hope, Nightcrawler teleported himself between them and was impaled through the chest by Bastion's hand in the process. Nightcrawler, praying to God for one final jump, teleported Hope to Utopia and died on the shore after saying that he believed in her. The X-Men, especially Wolverine, were devastated by his death, with some even blaming Hope or Cyclops for it. Nightcrawler was then given a cremation and a eulogy at Utopia helping from beyond the grave. Even from beyond the grave, Nightcrawler showed up to help Wolverine when he was fighting the demon possessing his body. Realizing that without help, Wolverine would lose his mind and body, Nightcrawler went into the part of Wolverine's mind where he kept the image of Jean Grey. Jean and Nightcrawler then helped Wolverine in the fight against the demon, and when they asked Nightcrawler if he was also a part of Wolverine's mind, Nightcrawler replied that he was actually the real one. Following the battle, Nightcrawler tried to convince Wolverine to not seek revenge against those who were responsible for the demon taking over his body, but Wolverine refused to listen to him, returning to the world of the living. Nightcrawler was residing in heaven following his death, which he enjoyed. He continued to be a loner due to feeling that he had some unfinished business and remained on the periphery of heaven instead of joining the choir. Azazel, Nightcrawler's father, decided to attack heaven by using Nightcrawler as the doorway while X-Men also arrived there using a portal created by the demon Bamps to help Nightcrawler and possibly resurrect him. The X-Men succeeded in defeating Azazel with the help of Professor X's spirit, who was killed by Cyclops, and the Bamps, using their powers, were able to successfully resurrect Nightcrawler, who rejoined the X-Men. The celebration for Nightcrawler's return was cut short when Mystique arrived looking for Azazel. Nightcrawler tried to stop her as well as Azazel, but got defeated by both of them. Nightcrawler slowly adjusted to being alive without a soul along with coming to terms with the changes that have occurred to the X-Men in his absence, which were Professor X's death, Wolverine's loss of his healing ability, and specifically Cyclops leaving the team to start a mutant revolution which disturbed Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler then reunited with Amanda Sefton by surprising her at her apartment, but it got cut short due to her being under the attack of Trimega. The duo was able to make their escape, but believing that Trimega may attack their mother, Margoli Sardos, they visited her at Winseldorf. 
Primagus continued to attack Nightcrawler, Amanda, and Margali, with the family seeking refuge at the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, located in Westchester. Margali was given the X-Men's protection despite their objections, and soon the person responsible for the Trimega attacks was revealed to be Margali herself. Margali wanted to extract the X-Men's memories to find out how they traveled to heaven to take control of the afterlife. She was successful and opened a rift in the fabric of reality, which was found out by Nightcrawler and Amanda, who defeated her. When the rift remained open, they realized that it needed to close from the other side, but Nightcrawler was not allowed to enter heaven due to willingly leaving earlier. Amanda went to heaven alone to close the rift, asking Nightcrawler to find his way back to her and sealed the rift to not allow Nightcrawler to kill himself while trying to reach her. Nightcrawler was left devastated because of losing Amanda, trying to console himself. Nightcrawler then slowly got more comfortable with the BAMPs, realizing that he could use their teleportation powers to make up for his limited teleportation ability. Nightcrawler found out that he could blame teleport to any place where the bounce had already been, along with being able to cover more distance than the earlier three-mile limit. Nightcrawler also accepted the role of an instructor at Jean Grey School, teaching young mutants to use their power, and also bonded with a student named Scorpion Boy. Nightcrawler also teamed up with Scorpion Boy on a mission to save Ziggy Cast, a mutant genius from the Crimson Pirates. He was soon hit with another loss due to Wolverine's death whom he and Pieter decided to honor by paying respect to the grave of his past lover, Mariko Yoshida, in Agarashima, Japan, along with coincidentally fighting ninja warriors similar to Wolverine. Bloody Bess, a member of the Crimson Pirates, was left with a strong impression of Nightcrawler during their brief interaction, and reached out to him telepathically after facing a psychic attack by the Shadow King. With the help of the Bamps, Nightcrawler teleported across the world to help Bess and he helped her fight the other possessed Crimson Pirates. But the situation got difficult when the X-Men arrived to help Nightcrawler, but in turn got under the Shadow King's control. Psylocke, Bess, and Nightcrawler were the only ones to resist the Shadow King's control, sending Nightcrawler to confront him in the Astral Plane. Nightcrawler defeated the Shadow King and then locked him in prison, but he and Bess had to face the attack of the other Crimson Pirates, who were attacking them on their own accord. Nightcrawler and Bess refused to follow their orders, resulting in Nightcrawler getting stabbed and dying for a second time. Reaching the afterlife, Nightcrawler was reunited with Amanda, who took him to the borderland and revealed it was the place for those with unfinished business. Nightcrawler also briefly reunited with Wolverine and the Phoenix, following which he was sent back to Earth to a completely healed body. Upon his return, Nightcrawler found out that the Crimson Pirates had kidnapped two young mutants, Scorpion Boy and Ziggo, to sell them to slavery at the Tullamore Vogue, a dimensional hideout. Bess and Nightcrawler traveled to Tullamore Vogue and rescued not only the two mutants, but also the other children who were captured there. Following this, Nightcrawler and Bloody Bess took a short romantic vacation before returning to his duties as an instructor. Nightcrawler also told his friends that his romance with Bess was not affecting the bond he had with Amanda, and hoped that everything would work out properly in its own time. A past trauma. Mr. Sinister had kidnapped Nightcrawler, and upon being rescued by the X-Men, they discovered that he was unable to speak. When Jean checked Nightcrawler's mind, she found that he'd witnessed a pile of mutant dead bodies killed by bigoted humans in Germany, which traumatized Nightcrawler to the point of not being able to talk building the nation of Krakoa. When Professor X, Magneto, and Apocalypse established the sovereign mutant nation of Krakoa, Nightcrawler was one of the X-Men members who became a citizen there and helped in building habitats. Nightcrawler was also part of the strike team that destroyed the Mother Mold by sacrificing his life, which was created by the anti-mutant organization Orcus to cause the arrival of Nimrod. The group of mutants called the Five later resurrected Nightcrawler along with his teammates by combining their powers and transferring the minds of deceased mutants into their clone bodies. Bodies. Nightcrawler was then selected to be a member of the Quiet Council of Krakoa, where he proposed a new law of allowing more mutant births to grow the population of Krakoa. He also believed that the new mutant way of life caused by mutant resurrections needed new philosophical and religious teachings. Nightcrawler then questioned certain Krakoan practices like the Crucible Rituals, where the mutants with no powers had to be killed in combat so that they could be resurrected with powers. Nightcrawler discovered a naturally created tower at Krakoa, which could only be accessed through teleportation, and decided to live there, naming it the Narthex. When a group of teenage mutants started trivializing death during a mission to destroy an anti-mutant museum funded by Orcus, Nightcrawler was disturbed and joined Dr. Nemesis to understand the problems plaguing the Krakoan society. During this, he ended up ignoring the a request from a depowered mutant named Lost to be her opponent in the Crucible, which resulted in Lost facing a gruesome death by Magneto. Nightcrawler and other resurrected 
residents of Krakoa were getting tormented by a psychic entity called Patchwork Man, who was feasting on their lost memories. Professor Rex believed it to be the work of his omnipotent son, Legion, and made Nightcrawler, Pixie, and Nemesis look for him at the secret Saudi Arabian Orcus facility, where Legion got his brain harvested to come up with possible methods to bring down Krakoa. Legion was then executed by Nightcrawler by making a mercy shot and then being subsequently resurrected. Legion and Nightcrawler became unpredictable allies as they exposed Krakoan mysteries and conflicts, including finding out that the Patchwork Man was Onslaught. Nightcrawler decided to keep Onslaught's presence a secret and attended the Hellfire Gala, where he ended up embarrassing himself by getting drunk due to being under the stress of finding a way to unite the mutant kind. The following day, Nightcrawler found out about the place called the Bower, where mutants connected and also served as a daycare for abandoned mutant children, which put Nightcrawler's understanding of mutant reproduction in Krakoa into question. Nightcrawler and Legion also spotted Onslaught at the Bower, tampering with Lost's emotions, causing her to attack Fabian Cortez. Nightcrawler approached Fabian at Central Park to ruin his plans of causing a terrorist attack to humiliate the Krakoan leaders and took him to the mutant planet of Arako, where Lost was hiding away. Nightcrawler tried to make them communicate, but the duo ended up fighting with each other, during which Onslaught arrived, causing Lost's powers to be overloaded by Fabian and killing her. Onslaught also caused Arako's moon Phobos to fall out of orbit to crush the planet, but Nightcrawler was able to get Fabian to boost his teleportation powers and put the moon back in its orbit. Nightcrawler was able to come up with the idea of the spark, which would help deal with the problem of lost memories powering Onslaught after resurrection. But this plan couldn't come to fruition, as Nightcrawler lost the memory of this due to his resurrection. Turn to the Dark Side Legion had created a pocket dimension called the Altar, which was anchored by the astral plane inside his mind to allow mutants to live together and be protected from Onslaught. Nightcrawler was able to communicate with Fabian at the Altar and was reminded about his plans regarding the Spark. Fabian also informed Nightcrawler that a fragment of Onslaught had been planted deep inside Lost's mind by Orcus, which helped Onslaught increase his powers and could destroy Krakoa. At the Altar, Nightcrawler introduced several mutants to the idea of the Spark, which was a set of unique ways to guide mutants' communal lives and also opportunities that had been presented after resurrection which caused Onslaught to get weaker and eventually destroyed. Nightcrawler later created a volunteer group called the Legionnaires, using the altar to protect the United Mutants and also to strengthen Krakoan laws under the motto of Keep the Peace, Keep the Law, Keep the Spark. Nightcrawler, being Krakoa's chief lawman, was introduced to the Iraqi law by storm through the Omega-level mutant, the Arbitrix Aura Serrata, the Witness. Nightcrawler was requested by Aura Serrata to be accompanied to Krakoa by one of her agents, Weaponless Zen look for the fugitive god of chaos, Tumult, the trickster Chimera, as the Iraqi culture didn't allow for belief in deities. This mission got intertwined with the Legionnaire's search for a body-stealing mutant named Switch, who was creating chaos in Krakoa. Nightcrawler and Zen were then guided by mutant Blindfold in the astral plane to look for a way to find Tumult. The duo was able to find out that Switch was worshipping Tumult to gain more power. Nightcrawler and Zen enjoyed a night of intimacy discussing faith and philosophy, following which Switch attacked the Legionnaires and was forced to switch bodies with Nightcrawler. This was actually a trick by Nightcrawler to allow him to contact Tumult in Switch's body, after which he found out that Aura Serrata was one of the original worshippers of Tumult to cause chaos and justify her dictatorship. Nightcrawler confronted Aura Serrata at the altar about her actions and restrained her. Unbeknownst to him, though, Mother Righteous was the mastermind behind these events. Destiny later foresaw with her powers that Druig would lead the Eternals in a battle against all mutant characters and asked Nightcrawler to alert the Great Ring, the governing body of planet Arako, about this. Eternal Uranus caused massive destruction at Arako, leading the ancient mutant Iska to betray the Great Ring. Nightcrawler teleported her away from Arako at the cost of getting a broken arm and returned to save the Iraqi from annihilation. The Avengers and Mr. Sinister gave life to the Celestial, the Progenitor, to get a chance at defeating the Eternals Druig and Uranus, but the Progenitor judged the Earth's inhabitants to be unworthy of being alive. When he started destroying Earth, Destiny influenced Nightcrawler to team up with Orcus and, in turn, the traitor Moira, who had joined Orcus. While the heroes reverted the destruction of Earth by the progenitor, Orcus protected its inhabitants. Following this, Nightcrawler inexplicably grew horns on his forehead and believed it to be a curse, which Mr. Sinister partially confirmed by calling the mutation to be influenced by magic. Mr. Sinister decided to kill Nightcrawler, but even after resurrection, he couldn't get rid of the horns. Nightcrawler found out that Dr. Nemesis found a similar action occurring with Angel at the x Corps, who the Legionnaires found to be far more corrupted by magic than Nightcrawler after Angel interacted with the new Black Knight. Pixie used her soul dagger on the Black Knight, 
taking the Legionnaires to Bavaria, where they discovered Margoli Sodos working for Orcus to be responsible for the magic corruption. Orcus made the move by using Nimrod to access Krakoa, while Nightcrawler completely gave in to the corruption and surrendered to Margali. She also used Nightcrawler's sense of hope to create a hope sword and decided to capture Nightcrawler to be used as a pawn by Orcus. Nightcrawler murdered three anti-Krakoan chiefs of state under Orcus's control to ruin the reputation of mutants. Mother Righteous was requested by Legion to save Nightcrawler, which she agreed to due to her own interest being served, and helped the Legionnaire save Nightcrawler along with ending his corruption spell and sacrificing Margali Sardos. Legion then confronted Mother Righteous to return the Hope Sword, which he gave to Nightcrawler along with vacating the altar and then disappearing to not allow Righteous to find him. Mother Righteous obliterated Liberated Nightcrawler and Legionnaires as revenge. Nightcrawler was then resurrected with no signs of corruption and decided to leave Krakoa after being accused of being a murderer. Finding out his true origins. Nightcrawler, in his mission to make up for the murders he'd committed under Orcus' control, decided to become a street level hero hiding in plain sight at the New York Central Park by borrowing one of Spider Man's suits and taking up a new alias. Coincidentally, around the same time, Orcus was successful in causing a massive attack on Krakoa during the third Hellfire Gala, resulting in a mutant genocide, leaving Nightcrawler as one of the remaining mutants on Earth. Mystique also experienced a stroke following the Hellfire Gala attack and was feeling unstable due to a psychic attack caused by Professor X. This ended up removing a mental block she had in her mind regarding Nightcrawler's birth and revealed the truth about his parentage. Mystique revealed that Destiny was Nightcrawler's birth mother. While Mystique shapeshifted her genes to a Y chromosome by copying Azazel genetic material, becoming Nightcrawler's birth father. However, after Destiny foresaw a future of Azazel taking over the world, they decided to give up Nightcrawler to be raised by Margali Sardos and let everyone believe that Azazel was his father. Orcus soon tracked Nightcrawler and hired Silver Sable, a mercenary, along with her team to hunt him down. But Sable soon fell for Nightcrawler, beginning an affair with him, and decided to fight against the Orcus. Vulture, who got recruited by Orcus as the head of the Hound program, sent mind-controlled mutants called the Hounds of Hell, who were upgraded with Technarchy Biotech stolen from Warlock, a techno-organic alien who was held captive by Orcus. This included mutants like Feral, Cloak, and Dagger, along with operatives like Rhino, who went against Nightcrawler to capture him. Nightcrawler decided to break into Vulture's lab with the help of Sable and Mystique, who shapeshifted to Nightcrawler while he disguised as Sable's Wild Pack member. Upon entering the lab, Nightcrawler freed Warlock, who released the mutants from the Technarchy upgrades but found it difficult to defeat Vulture. Vulture had used Warlock's biotech to upgrade his flight rig, and Nightcrawler impaled him with the Hope Sword to allow Warlock to reabsorb Vulture's tech, leading to an end to Orcus's mutant experiments. Nightcrawler on the big screen Nightcrawler made his live-action cinematic debut in X2 X-Men United, portrayed by Alan Cumming. In the prequel comic, it was revealed that Nightcrawler was a performer for his foster mother, Margali Sardos's traveling circus in Canada. He saved his foster sister, Amanda Sefton, from death during a trapeze performance going wrong and also harbored feelings for her. On a visit to a church, Nightcrawler was tricked into being captured by William Stryker using his telepathic prisoner, Mutant 12, to make him think that Amanda loved him and wanted to run away with him. William took Nightcrawler to the Weapon X facility at the Alkali Lake, where he was prevented from teleporting using an inhibitor collar and interrogated by William, which he refused. Nightcrawler was beaten up by the soldiers for praying and was later given a chance to beat them up by William, which he refused. One of William's guards made fun of Nightcrawler by revealing Amanda loving him back was just an illusion, and no one could love a freak like him, which deeply hurt his feelings. In the movie, Nightcrawler was under William Stryker's control and was used to assassinate the president, which he managed to escape after being shot at and teleporting away. Professor X found Nightcrawler through Cerebro and was recruited into the X-Men by Storm and Jean Grey, who looked after him. Nightcrawler then joined the X-Men in a mission to rescue the Xavier School students who were kidnapped by William Stryker's soldiers. On their way in the X-Jet, the team was attacked by fighter jets, which led to Rogue falling out but got saved by Nightcrawler with Magneto saving the rest of the team. Jean Grey read Nightcrawler's mind to find the location of William Stryker's base, with the X-Men including Nightcrawler going there to find Professor X and the kidnapped students. Nightcrawler later arrived at the White House along with the rest of the X-Men to warn the President about an incoming war. Nightcrawler made his second appearance in X-Men Apocalypse, being played by Cody Smith McPhee after a change in timeline. Nightcrawler worked in a Munich circus, where he got captured and taken to a mutant fight club, being forced to fight the mutant Angel. Nightcrawler was unable to teleport out of there due to the walls of the club 
Robin was forced to attack Angel, injuring his left wing by slamming him into a wall after showing reluctance to fight. Nightcrawler and Angel were able to escape the Fight Club due to Mystique shutting down the power of the place, with her also taking Nightcrawler to Caliban to get new identities for safe traveling. After seeing news about Magneto, Mystique took Nightcrawler to visit Professor X at his school. Nightcrawler met fellow mutants Jubilee, Cyclops, and Jean Grey, and they quickly formed a friendship, leading to them going out together to have fun. Nightcrawler had a normal teenage experience for the first time when he shopped for records, watched a movie, and got a brain freeze from a frozen drink. Upon their return, the four discovered the school had been attacked by Apocalypse and his four horsemen, with William Stryker later arriving to capture Mystique, Beast, Quicksilver, and Moira McTaggart. Nightcrawler and others remained hidden in the school's rubble and sneaked into William's jet to rescue their friends. The group then sneaked into William's base at Alkali Lake, releasing a captured Wolverine along with their friends who were found by Nightcrawler. The group then went on the mission to save Professor X in Cairo, with Nightcrawler given the responsibility of getting Professor X's body before the transfer of consciousness occurred. Nightcrawler faced Angel once again, who was one of Apocalypse's horsemen, and defeated him. While escaping in their jet, the X-Men were attacked by the horsemen, with Nightcrawler teleporting everyone to safety, but also passing out in the process. Upon waking up, he found that Apocalypse was finally defeated, and later became a student at Xavier's school, joining the X-Men. In X-Men Dark Phoenix, the X-Men became worldwide superheroes, with Professor X becoming an advisor to the president. When a space shuttle faced a problem in space, Professor X sent his team, consisting of Nightcrawler, Jean, Cyclops, Storm, Quicksilver, and Mystique, with Beast piloting the X-Jet to rescue the astronauts. Nightcrawler teleported inside the spaceship along with Quicksilver and brought them back to the X-Jet. One of the astronauts pointed at their commander being absent, causing Nightcrawler to teleport inside the ship again with Jean to prevent what they believed to be a solar flare. Nightcrawler was able to save the commander with Jean left behind in the ship, leading to her absorbing the Phoenix Force. Nightcrawler then rescued her body from space and returned to Earth as a hero, with signs showing the people's love for him and a child wearing face paint to look similar to him. Nightcrawler later fought Magneto's ally Selene and Araki on the streets of New York alongside Cyclops and Storm, but was knocked unconscious along with having his powers suppressed by an inhibitor collar by the military. One of the soldiers expressed his disappointment in Nightcrawler by revealing that his son idolized Nightcrawler, but when the alien Dabari attacked a train, Nightcrawler pleaded to be released so that he and the other X-Men could help. Witnessing his fellow soldiers dying, the soldier agreed. Later, during the fight between the X-Men and Magneto, Nightcrawler maintained his distance to not kill anybody, and after witnessing the death of a soldier, he joined the fight against the Dabari. Nightcrawler used his teleportation to dodge attacks and his tail to fight back, but was eventually knocked unconscious by Vuk. When Jean destroyed the train and disintegrated the Dabari, she made sure to protect Nightcrawler before taking Vuk to space to kill her, and seemingly herself. Nightcrawler made his most recent movie appearance in the Deadpool 2 movie, where he made a cameo alongside Professor X, Storm, Beast, Quicksilver, and Cyclops in a room behind Deadpool who was taken there to recover from his attempt to blow himself up, and complained about not seeing the other X-Men beside Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, unaware about the other X-Men being in the room behind him. Nightcrawler's Animated Adventures Nightcrawler made his animated debut in Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends, where he appeared in some of the episodes. Nightcrawler faced the Siberiad, who trapped him in a plasma bubble, but didn't allow him to use his teleportation. Later, the X-Men arrived to rescue him, overcoming difficult traps set by Siberiad, and defeated him alongside Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler's next appearance was in the Pride of the X-Men series, where he was often judged harshly because of his appearance, with even Kitty Pride fearing him. Initially, Nightcrawler proved his heroic nature by fighting Magneto alongside Side Kitty and almost sacrificing himself to save humanity from large-scale destruction. Despite the danger, Nightcrawler was able to stay alive, got an apology from Kitty for judging him wrongfully. In X-Men The Animated Series, Nightcrawler made his appearance during a ski trip taken by Wolverine, Rogue, and Gambit in Germany. Nightcrawler faced hatred from the townsfolk, who burnt his monastery after believing him to be a demon. Wolverine helped Nightcrawler to make the townspeople understand Nightcrawler's compassionate and good nature, along with learning a lesson on faith in return. Nightcrawler Nightcrawler later took the help of the X-Men to find out about his birth mother, who had abandoned him during his childhood. It was revealed that none other than Mystique was his mother, who had him after being involved in an affair with a wealthy baron, but they separated after Nightcrawler's birth due to his demonic appearance. Despite Mystique's continuous rejection, Nightcrawler continued to love her because of his faith and even saved her when Graydon Creed tried to kill them. Mystique soon realized her mistake of abandoning Nightcrawler 
and expressed her regret. Over in X-Men Evolution, Nightcrawler attended Xavier's Institute, which he considered to be his home. Nightcrawler also came to terms with the reveal of Mystique being his mother and Rogue being his foster sister. When Mystique was turned into stone, Nightcrawler tried his best to protect her from being broken and prevented the Brotherhood from stealing her. Nightcrawler flirted with his teammate Kitty Pride, but it grew into a bond of close friendship. Nightcrawler later dated and most probably ended up with Amanda Sefton. Nightcrawler's most recent animated appearance was in Wolverine and the X-Men, where he made his way to Genosha and fought the Reavers, a group of criminal cyborgs alongside other mutants who were going to Genosha with him. Arriving at the mutant heaven, Genosha, created by Magneto, Nightcrawler uncovered its secrets and was attacked by the Scarlet Witch because of this, although he managed to escape due to his teleportation powers. Nightcrawler was then captured by Mystique at Xavier's Institute and was taken back to Genosha, following which he and Scarlet Witch were taken hostage in a submarine forest by Mojo and the Reavers. They fought a brainwashed Wolverine but managed to survive and escape along with Wolverine. Nightcrawler and the Scarlet Witch were also shown to harbor some lingering feelings towards each other, to the point of even sharing a kiss. Nightcrawler later fought the Phoenix, the Hellfire Club, as well as Magneto Sentinels alongside Kitty Pride. Marvelous Verdict Nightcrawler is no doubt one of the most beloved members of X-Men, with a tragic but complicated backstory and a cool power to teleport. The Blue Devil is a lot more than what meets the eye, allowing for stories with deep exploration about not judging the book by its cover. Nightcrawler's status as a mutant with belief in God and philosophical understanding makes him a standout character to question the reader's values about their own morality. With a lot more left to explore from his adventures and his character, it remains an exciting wait to see more of him in the pages of comics and how he'll be adapted again on screen. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.